and uh, two U.S. attorneys in Arizona, two U.S. attorneys in Texas, what happened is uh, I filed criminal complaints. I went and filed a criminal complaint against Wells Fargo Bank because they were compelling the disclosure of a social security number to get a bank account. And uh, I sent it to the U.S. attorney, and then I didn't care what he did. After 30 days, I filed a criminal complaint against the U.S. attorney for perjury of oath and all that. Two of them. You know, the next thing you know, they're gone. Then I figured, well, I can't get them all removed. <laughs> so I figured I'll just give up on that one. But now the banks have changed, okay? So something happened, and, and, and those U.S. attorneys left. And what I did as a part of that was I, I, I sent dear perjurer letters to every member of the U.S. Senate and, uh, and, uh, and about 135 members of Congress, and that was one of the things I said in there uh, because the, they're compelling the disclosure of a Social Security number to get a bank account. And, uh, and, uh, but now I guess it's changed. And, uh, and they don't necessarily uh, uh, demand a Social Security number. But so again, if you don't complain, nothing's going to change. Okay? Are we about done? Okay. Um, so uh, I can't tell you, uh, uh, it just goes on and on. I mean, uh, Alberta Gonzalez, I, in my petition for writ of certiorari to the U.S. Supreme Court, I attached a criminal complaint against Alberta Gonzalez. Two weeks later, he resigned. He said he was hiring attorneys to defend himself against the Department of Justice. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then what happened is the U.S. Solicitor General waived their right to respond in that case. And then in a petition for rehearing, I filed a criminal complaint against the U.S. Solicitor General. His name was Paul Clements. Two weeks later, he's out of there. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. I'm telling you, you have no idea. You bring up the right issues. You've got to bring up the right issues. And, and, and when, when you're right, and they know you're right, I mean, if there's even a hint of impropriety, they're history. Okay, we'll take a little break for five minutes right now. Matter of fact, why don't we break for lunch? It's lunchtime. We'll break and we'll come back. At I, I, I attached a petition or I attached a criminal complaint against Alberto Gonzalez to a petition for a writ to search to the U.S. Supreme Court. And two weeks later, Alberto Gonzalez resigned. I think I already went to that. And then, and then Paul uh, uh, Clements, he resigned and I, after I filed a criminal complaint against him. Um, I filed criminal complaints against the court clerk for addressing mail to me with a zip code. The clerk disappears and all future mail comes without a zip code. Uh, I developed, this is a procedure that I developed over the last five years. I sent a registered letter to my public servant. When my public servant violates my rights, I file a criminal complaint against him and send it to his boss. After 30 days, I don't care what happens. In other words, his boss might, might be investigating it. I don't care. I'm, I, this, is, this is when I presume, okay? <laughs> and I presume his boss isn't going to do anything. And so after 30 days, I make up another criminal complaint uh, with, the bo with the public servant and his boss as a co-conspirator after the fact, and, and, uh, and I send it to their boss's boss. And, and so when I say I file a criminal complaint, I don't file it in any court or anything like that. I send it to their boss. Um, anyways, after 30 days, I don't care what their boss's boss does. I presume he's not going to do anything either. And I, I make up another criminal complaint against the, the public servant, his boss, and their boss's boss. And, uh, and I send it on to the next one up the chain of command. And, and I do that all the way up to the president or the queen. And, and, and I don't care what they do. Uh, so what happens essentially is by the time I'm done, everybody and their brother knows about this. And the next thing you know, the guy disappears. It's amazing how that works. And um, so, um, you know, I always use registered mail. When I send a criminal complaint, I send their boss one of these notice and demands. And I just add one paragraph at the end, and it says, I hereby demand that you remove your criminal, uh, uh, you know, and that's it. And, um, um, and then the next criminal complaint, I attach that to the criminal complaint as part of the evidence, saying that he's got notice and he's not doing anything and he's an accomplice after the fact and all the rest of it. You see what I'm saying? And their statutes don't mean anything to me. I couldn't care about their statutes. It means nothing to me. Um, I just keep going up the chain of command to the uh, President of the United States or the Queen. And I always make sure they get a copy. I used to add the Queen, you know, accuse her of perjury and treason, send her a copy. And, and, and uh, uh, in this case, Barack Obama. Um, you know, but I saw a letter actually that a friend of mine got back from the Queen when he. Uh, 
was complaining about uh, all the criminals in the system and then plus he <laughs> congratulated her on her jubilee eh? <laughs> and and her clerk her her executive secretary sent sent a letter back saying the queen really enjoyed his letter and all that right? so i thought i thought that was kind of interesting yes She's the Queen of Canada. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that too. Okay. So, um, what I what happens is when I get to the to whoever the final criminal complaint is against, then I record the whole package, and and that's the part that I'll send to the the Queen or the President, and. Uh, and, and what happens, and, and recording is very powerful. If you notice my traffic stop lawful notice and my photo ID affidavit that I use and my notice and demand to uh, corporate commercial agents, they're up here. Um, you're welcome to look at those. If you want one, I'll email them to you. But I, want, I need those because I use them to serve them on people. Uh, anyways, um, they're all recorded, okay? And that's very, very important. Okay, because once they're recorded, they're public policy. Okay, and, and this is something I happen to have some first-hand knowledge of because I've worked in aviation for 35 years. And so I deal with regulations as far as aviation is concerned all day, every day. And that's how they make regulations. That's exactly how they make regulations. Is they put out notice and then after 30 days, or sometimes it's longer if they give you more time, but the bottom line is, is they put out notice and then it becomes a regulation. And you can make your own law in their system by doing that. I am telling you, you have no idea the power you have. You don't know who you are. Yes? When you talk about recording, you mean like with the county? Or? Uh huh. Yeah, I record it, the county recorder. The one I use is in Arizona. There's one in, you can record them here in Texas, but they're more expensive. They cost like four bucks a page. Arizona, it's a buck a page. It's 13 bucks for the first five pages or first eight pages, I can't remember. And then it's a buck a page after that, which is quite reasonable. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I use Arizona. There's also supposed to be a county in uh, uh, South Carolina or North Carolina, something like that, that is comparable to that. So I don't know. But, uh, so, uh, uh, but I, I do it in Arizona. And, uh, and uh, it's very powerful. Okay, You essentially make your own law. When it gets to the, uh, what happens is, remember what I'm doing is, is I make a criminal complaint and I send it to their boss with a notice and demand, right? And then after 30 days, I don't care what their boss does, I, I make another criminal complaint, put that whole package of paperwork together and send it to their boss's boss. You see what I'm saying? So by the time I'm done, you know, I mean, it, it, I could easily have, I'll definitely have over 100 pages worth of stuff, okay? And it's all part of the evidence trail. And, uh, and so I'll put that whole package together and, and file that into the county after it's done. Okay, so I only record it once. And, and what you do, if you look at my criminal complaints, you, uh, like the actual affidavit, you know, might have 18 pages, and then you got all this evidence you're attaching to it, so you just, first, first page of the evidence, you write in 19, next page 20, okay? You hand write in all of the pages, so that you tie them all together. And, uh, and then when you record it, the counter recorder puts their seal on it and it tells you how many pages there are. You see what I'm saying? And then all the pages are sequentially numbered. It all ties it all in together real nice. And, uh, um, you know, so yes. How can you do it without paying money to do it? Well, yeah, you pretty well got to pay money. <laughs> In the counter recorder, they want you know the filing fee, and uh, yeah, I, I just go ahead and pay them. They make you know, I mean that pays for their service, and I mean that's worth something, you know. They put it on the internet, you know. I mean anybody can go there and look up my stuff that I've done. You just go on the internet. We could go and look at it right now if you wanted, and uh, um, you know, so uh, they provide a service that that I think is worth it, and. Um, so I don't mind paying, especially if it's reasonable. In Texas, it's four bucks a page, so I think that's a little bit pricey. But, um, you know, in Arizona, it's not. At any rate, so um, 
after 30 days after you record it, it becomes public policy. That's very powerful. You can make your own law. When I send them a notice and demand, I usually get no response at all. That means they've acquiesced. If there's something that you're saying that is not true, they have a duty to point it out. And, uh, and, and if they're idiots, they, they, they will say, well, this is wrong, and, 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 and I make sure that I'm right. And, uh, and so then if, if they come back and say, you know, that's why, that's why, you know, as an idiot that said, well, we're going to enforce our traffic safety laws, and if you don't have a driver's license, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. Well, that's great evidence. <laughs> <laughs> out of their own mouth, you know. So one of the first documents I sent out to the Pinal County Recorder, and she sent me back a short letter back that said, thank you for your document. I put it on file for future reference, and then she signed it personally, and it said most respectfully, okay? I mean, that's, that's a perfect answer. Um, uh, a, a judge in Texas, that's a Johnson County judge that I was telling you about, sent me a certified copy of his oath of office and surety bond. That's a perfect response. Nine times out of ten, I don't get anything. The Edmonton City Police sent me a letter. And, and this, if you look at it, it's right here. It's a perfect response. It says, uh, this letter will, con this will confirm your letter was received. I reviewed the contents and note there are no articulated complaints of misconduct or complaints of service with respect to any of the members. Uh, and as such, this mis uh, matter is classified as information only. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, uh, and, and so that's it, right? I mean, that's perfect. They're saying we got it, and we're putting it down for information only. We're not denying anything you're saying. You see what I'm saying? And uh, the U.S. Solicitor General sent me a letter, and I got a copy of that up there if you want to pass it around. Um, uh, 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 <clears throat> I sent him, and this is a blown up copy, and I'm going to zoom in on it here. Um, whoa, what the heck happened there? Wow. I guess. Wow, that's weird. Okay, well, if you notice, it says Glenn Winningham House of Fern, right? This is how, if, if you've done your homework, this is how they'll answer you, and you'll know that it's working. Okay, because I always tell them I'm Glenn Winningham House of Fern. And I always tell them that unless you want to be guilty of mail fraud, and, and Title 18, United States Code, Section 1342, says that, that it, uh, uh, if they send mail, it's a felony to send mail to an address that is not a, quote-unquote, proper mailing address or a fictitious mailing address, okay? You'd have to read it and see what it says exactly. I don't have it here. But, so what I do in my document is I tell them, my proper mailing address is this. And uh, if you send it to any other address, you intend to be guilty of mail fraud. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I've got this wording down. I tweaked it here and there for a long time, and now it's, it works every time. And, uh, and so, uh, 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 and, and right here. So you notice, does anybody know what the queen's last name is? Does anybody know? Yes. Actually, very few people know that. 